السلام علیکم سٹوڈنٹس ایز وی آر ڈسکسنگ دا پوئم دیٹ از این ایوننگ ویٹ ود رین وی ڈیڈ اٹس ریڈنگ وی ریڈ دا پوئم ان دا پریویس لیکچر اینڈ ٹوڈے ول بی اینالائزنگ دا پوئم ول ڈو اٹس اینالسس ول ڈو دا اینالسس آف دا پوئم این ایوننگ ویٹ ود رین See, as far as uh, this uh, poem is concerned, in this poem, the poet or the speaker of this poem, uh, we can say uh, the speaker of the poem is the poet himself. The speaker of the poem is the poet himself. First, uh, we will analyze the poem and then we'll discuss some uh, techniques used in the poem. See, the poet shares his experience of a rainy evening. So, he's uh, talking about an experience. Experience of uh, a rainy evening. Experience of a rainy evening. And uh, uh, he, he walks uh, through a lane and finds himself uh, all alone in the twilight. A twilight, uh, that is uh, the time uh, when it is uh, evening time. and uh, uh, initially the rain and the breeze makes him feel good yeah yes uh, we uh, read that in uh, the uh, previous lecture that uh, initially in the very first lines of the poem the poet feels good the poet uh, fe feels good because of uh, the rain and because of the breeze uh, that is around him and uh, then his heart suggests him uh, to hold the raindrops with love and uh, his mind perceives the noticeable signals that the breeze produces and uh, see this is uh, this poem is about an experience experience of a, a rainy evening and uh, when the poet is walking through a lane and he finds himself uh, in that uh, in that uh, rainy atmosphere rainy surroundings and uh, uh, initially we see that uh, uh, that is that that looks a, that looks a beautiful atmosphere uh, for the poet but uh, uh, things take turn once uh, the poem goes on once the poem goes on yes his heart suggests him to hold the raindrops with love and his mind perceives the noticeable signals that the breeze produces and the poet is clueless about whether to wet himself in the rain or wrapped with the wind so in the very uh, beginning of the poem in the very uh, in, uh, beginning lines of the poem we find that the poet is in confusion it is not a confusion it is a confusion uh, of uh, choices confusion uh, in making choice he has two choices one to stand uh, on the ground in the rain or to wrapped with the wind or to move uh, along the wind so he's in a, he's in a, a confusion so the poet uh, seems to be clueless about uh, whether to wet himself in the rain or uh, move with the wind and then the poet watches the windows uh, doors curtains extra of the nearby houses getting wet he watches cool breeze turn the leaves of the banyan tree the water seeping through his shoes has uh, made his feet cold also and uh, the ground is slippery and his mind desperately needs somewhere to rest the poet reflects upon the damp evening and uh, think is that his life is as grim as the evening so all these things on one side the poet uh, observe sorry the poet observes the rainy evening the rainy evening and uh, the outcome of that rainy evening he observes everything the wet doors the wet windows he observes the uh, banyan tree he observes the leaves of the banyan tree and uh, he is he is actually he he notices all the things around him and uh, he observes uh, the rainy evening the evening uh, which is full of rain and the poet reflects upon 
the damn evening and thinks that his life is as grim as the evening and he's comparing he's comparing these things he's comparing uh, this uh, rainy this rainy evening with his uh, life with his own life and he thinks that uh, same is the case same is the case uh, with my life as uh, with this evening the evening is uh, not in a good shape the evening is not in the good mood and same is the case with the life of the poet and uh, he finds that uh, hopelessness has darkened the evening of his life the utter disappointment has led him by his arm and uh, he he he's uh, he's uh, getting involved uh, in this uh, evening because uh, he's comparing his life with uh, this evening and just like this evening where there is no hope there is all around is this hopelessness his uh, life has also become hopeless and he couldn't find any productivity in his life the poet then recalls his childhood and uh, uh, he, he says that when he would uh, uh, it there was a time there was a time when it was my childhood and uh, i would keep enjoying i would keep uh, alone i would en keep enjoying i would enjoy uh, being alone in the courtyard and the breeze would bring the music of symbols so uh, the poet uh, who is uh, in this utter chaos who is in hopelessness who is uh, who is behaving who is behaving uh, as he is uh, he is in a confusion uh, he is in a confusion he is in a chaos his mind is not in order and his mind is filled with uh, this chaos this chaotic situation and now this uh, this despair this disappointment the poet wants to drag out this disappointment from his mind uh, because uh, he is trying to he is trying to remember his childhood memories he is trying to make his mind fresh with childhood memories that is how he is uh, taking out all the chaotic uh, scenes out of his mind so he is relying here on the memories of his childhood childhood memories and uh, he recalls his uh, childhood when he would uh, uh, enjoy being alone in his courtyard and uh, the breeze the breeze same breeze now the breeze is uh, useless now the breeze cannot bring any uh, sweet sound to his ears it can only bring the sound of uh, those fluttering uh, leaves of banyan tree those uh, fluttering leaves of banyan tree but uh, once upon a time when he was a child uh, this breeze would uh, bring the music of symbols so that was the productivity that was the power of uh, the childhood but now his life has uh, gone into the evening his life is hopeless his life has become uh, uh, his life has uh, become chaotic and now the breeze uh, don't bring any music uh, the breeze don't satisfy his ears it only disturbs his ears while bringing the sound of those fluttering leaves and uh, he then regrets uh, those uh, joyful days which were not liable to be called back and the poet feels that uh, the evening is drowning in the lap of night and the shadows have gathered into its dark tank and then the poet feels that evening is over now it is going to be over now it is coming to an end because the dark night would gobble this evening would gobble this evening it would eat this evening out and uh, this evening would be no more in uh, in a short period of time and same if he compares when he compares this evening to his life so he is also in utter chaos and he is at the he is at the verge of his death he also thinks that this evening would be no more and my life uh, that is also at the verge of end and that my life would be no more after some time and uh, he does however trace out some electric lights in the houses he also sees moonlight holding the hem of the moon but uh, though he is uh, he is hopeless 
he doesn't find any hope he doesn't find any hope anywhere in anything but uh, still he he finds uh, he traces out some electric lights he traces out some electric lights in the houses and uh, he also sees uh, moonlight holding the hammer moon laughing at him so all these things the poet observes uh, in this poem the poet talks about uh, in this poem so uh, this is a poem where a poet is uh, talking about his unproductivity so he is not as productive as he was in his childhood as he was in his youth so the shadows uh, the houses which are lit with electric bulbs uh, they are lively and full of fun and uh, the poet is wandering in the silent streets and uh, knows nothing about his destination so this is what unproductivity is he doesn't know what his destination is he doesn't know what he has to do he doesn't know where he has to reach he has no destination as at all and he has no target at all and uh, and the other side moonlight holding the edge of the moon is laughing at him that uh, she is laughing at him because uh, he is in no hurry he is in no hurry he is unaware of his destination because uh, when a person is not in a hurry when a person is unaware of his destination so that makes him very relaxed and same is the case with the poet he is in no hurry he only knows that the light of an earthen lamp in a modest inn on the roadside awaits him some uh, some earthen lamp is waiting for him that awaits for him but uh, he has no destination at all that is not his destination that thing is waiting for him that thing awaits him but uh, he is he is not having he doesn't have any uh, destination he doesn't have any uh, this uh, a target in his mind he doesn't have any destination in his mind where he has to go see uh, the poet the poem is about uh, the poet's uh, gloomy and uh, sad uh, state it is about the poet's gloomy and sad state and uh, as far as this poem is concerned if we try to get the things uh, get the a meanings again get the details again from the poem we can take that the poet is a uh, very gloomy and alone in this poem and he wants the company of uh, some beloved he wants the company of some beloved he feels exhausted so gloomy exhausted he feels depressed he feels depressed for he has lost all the hopes in the evening of his lie because uh, he has lost all the hopes in the evening of his life see on the one side there is this evening of the day and on the other side there is this evening of his life and this evening of his life it is a symbol it is a symbol used in this poem and uh, it symbolizes his old age he's he's in his old age that is how uh, we are uh, told that uh, we are uh, told that uh, he's in his uh, he's uh, in the evening of his life that is he's in his old age and that is why he feels exhausted he feels depressed and he has lost all the hopes and uh, due to this sadness and uh, aloofness he cannot enjoy the nature of he cannot enjoy the beauty of nature see once upon a time once upon a time when he was a child when he was a child the this breeze it would bring to him the sound of cymbals the banyan leaves or the rain it would it would appeal his senses it would appeal his senses and uh, he would write something he would do something and that was uh, a productive step that was a productive step but now the rejuvenating fresh rain the cool breeze the uh, this uh, fluttering of banyan leaves they don't appeal him any elsewhere they don't appeal him any more now which otherwise used to enchant and enthrall him they would attract him once upon a time but now he is in his old age he is in the evening of his life these things don't appeal him any more now that is how he has become unproductive
and then the poet only observes silence everywhere he observes silence everywhere and uh, he is feeling heavy in his eyes it could be due to sleep or fever we are told in the poem that uh, uh, there is there are chances that uh, it could be uh, because of the sleep or because of the fever and uh, then the poet also feels quite no quite nostalgic about his childhood when he used to stand in the courtyard listening uh, to smooth sound of cymbals and that breeze at that time the breeze would bring to his ears the sweet sound of cymbals but at the same time he feels sad because this melody now has no charm to entertain him but uh, the time the breeze the sounds they are the same they are the same but he is not getting entertained now he doesn't get any interest in that that is how his life has changed there was this bright day when he was a child but now when he is in old age his life has also his life has also found itself into the uh, into the times of evening that is how he is not productive anymore he doesn't uh, get uh, he doesn't get sweetness uh, from these things anymore he feels sad for it is beyond his control to call back good old timers and uh, he is sad why because he knew that i can't bring back all those days when i would be happy when i would uh, when these things would appeal my senses i cannot call back uh, these uh, uh, these uh, good old timers that is why he feels uh, very sad he is in utter sadness and then the poet uh, poet has reached to the evening of his life uh, he has reached his old age and he is uh, full of despair and he has no desire uh, in his uh, life now and the poet hopes to sleep in the lap of night which is death so he says that everything is going to sleep in the lap of death so he is along with all those things he is also going to sleep uh, in the lap of night that uh, symbolizes death here so two or three symbols have been used in the poem one is the uh, evening that is old age and this uh, lap of night that symbolizes death here in the poem he is unaware of his destiny and leaves himself to the, his fate so the poem ends like this that uh, the poet has no destiny and uh, he leaves himself to his fate he leaves himself uh, and he uh, he thinks that uh, fate would decide where i have to go what i have to do so all these things are in the poem see now as far as uh, poetic devices are concerned we have some two or three uh, four poetic devices used in the poem and uh, uh, for example imagery has been used in the poem we have this uh, symbols have been used in the poem we have metaphor has been used in the poem and uh, personification has been used in the poem and uh, as far as imagery is concerned we uh, imagery is simply refers to the use of words uh, to describe ideas or situation is and there are uh, kinds of uh, imagery there are uh, different kinds of imagery but here in this poem uh, we uh, see the poet uses uh, visual imagery in this poem he has used visual imagery in this poem uh, for example wet windows uh, here see wet windows are here doors are here awning sari hair wet collar of the coat water seeping through the shoes fluttering of uh, banyan leaves all these are uh, imageries used by the poet in this poem used by the poet in this poem so uh, imagery is used and uh, symbols i told you while we were analyzing the poem there is this evening that symbolizes the old age of the poet and that uh, 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 lap of night that is also that is uh, somewhat a symbol of death and uh, as far as uh, metaphors are concerned we have this uh, metaphor this uh, the clouds uh, gathering in the mind shed their tears as they pass this is a metaphor used in the poem and uh, 
for sonification the evening prepares to go to sleep in the lipo, uh, li, uh, lap of night so it is a personification used in the poem so this was all about uh, today's uh, uh, lecture in which we uh, analyzed the poem and uh, we discussed a little bit about uh, the poetic devices used in the poem i hope uh, you will be fine so uh, till the next lecture allah hafiz and goodbye